CorelDRAW 2020 includes improved shadow tools. The previous drop shadow tool, found in the effects toolbar, is now the shadow tool, with options to produce either a drop shadow or an inner shadow. Both types of shadows can add 3D depth to your design elements, and the tool's interactivity makes the effect easy to fine-tune. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I'll start with a simple example to illustrate the two types of shadows. I'll activate Shadow, then Drop Shadow, click the circle to select it, and drag from the center toward the direction of the shadow. This shadow effect makes the entire circle appear to be floating above the white background. If the arrow stays within the circle, the shadow is no longer angled and is projected uniformly all the way around. I'll click Clear Shadow, then switch to Inner Shadow. I'll drag from the center outward, and the shadow now is all inside the circle. The depth effect appears along the edges, giving the circle itself a 3D appearance. I can change the shadow opacity, reduce the feathering to sharpen the shadow, change the blend mode, and also the shadow color. If I drag the arrow outside the circle, I can get a side lit effect, and changing the arrow direction changes the shadow offset values. For a more complex example, I'll add shadows to give depth effects to the various layers of this bird image. I'll start with the bird itself. The wing is this curve in the object's inspector, but it blends with the curves next to it. With the wing curve pre-selected, I'll apply a drop shadow from the center, an easy way to make this curve appear to be raised above its neighbors. I can do the same for the neck, beak, and body. To give some depth to the trees, I want to apply more drop shadows. I'll start with a large tree, which, like the bird, is inside a power clip. I could pre-select the tree in the inspector, like I did with the bird curves, but I'll show a different method. I'll right-click on the tree and choose Edit Power Clip. Drop shadow is still active, and now I can access the tree and click and drag to create the drop shadow. I'll increase the opacity, decrease feathering, and adjust the angle a bit. Drop shadow is still active, and I want to give the small tree the same shadow. So I'll click the curve of the small tree, click Copy Shadow Properties, and click anywhere on the shadow of the large tree. Then I'll right click in blank space and finish editing the power clip. Now I want to apply inner shadows on the curves that make up the frame of the image. I'll start by selecting the power clip curve itself, choose Shadow, then Inner Shadow, then click anywhere in the center, drag, and stop within the curve. I can adjust the inner shadow width with the arrow, stopping very close to the edge, resulting in a small inner shadow width. I'll sharpen the shadow by reducing the feathering. Note that this curve is a lot more complex than the circle I showed in the beginning, but the inner shadow still follows all edges. The next curve to shadow is the outer green oval, and I'll copy the inner shadow of the power clip curve. For the two remaining curves in the corners, I could easily select each and copy the previous shadows, but I can also select them both, start the inner shadow, then copy from another shadow, and the shadow is applied to both corner curves at once. Or I can undo, select both curves and make them a group, and copy the same shadow as before, applying that shadow to the entire group. Shadows can be applied to text as well. I'm applying an inner shadow with a shadow color change, and as long as the arrow stays within one of the letters, each letter will have the same inner shadow. I can edit the text, or change the font, and the inner shadow is maintained. To switch from an inner shadow to a drop shadow, I can select the text, activate shadow, switch the mode, and adjust shadow properties. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on shadow effects in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.